So far in the DVD, we've discussed various aspects of Wing Chun that included spatial awareness, first touch and reaction to LARP. Uh, what I'd like to do is just introduce a quick drill for you. Now, this is a drill that I found quite successful in teaching in the class. A couple of reasons why, because initially it focuses on responding to first touch, and then it takes it a stage further and it allows a student to look for spaces or gaps or awareness or weaknesses in the person's frame, which are some of the ideas we discussed earlier in DVD. So basically what this is is an, exer an exercise that encapsulates all of those ideas and brings them into one training format for you. To help me with this exercise is Sifo Eric Wilson. He's a good friend and training partner. He's been training with me for over 20 years. So we're going to go through this together. We're going to explain it to you and put it, put it down onto uh, film for you. So basic premise, we're going to start with a very simple shape, Bong Larp Sao. We spoke about Bong very, very briefly, but I'm just going to go through the actual application of this and then show you how we follow up. So if I face Eric, first of all, I'll show my respect to my training partner. As always, the first thing you should do when you're training with your partner, especially if you're training at home, is to still work through your basic stance. So form your stance, lift your hips up. For the sake of training, not fighting, we'll show you the fighting application of this a little bit later on in the DVD. We're going to work with our hands back. Now, if my partner does a center line punch, I want you to punch through the center to bridge. Okay, remember, that's the whole idea of what we've been talking about, the long bridge, going forwards and striking. Now, when you're punching, try to make sure you focus on punching towards the nose. It's quite an important aspect to punch towards the nose because, as I mentioned earlier, it gives you better coverage and it keeps you safe and protected from when they're punching you. Now, one of the things you'll often find is when you're intercepting through the center, is you'll get some pressure going across the arm. When it goes across the arm, that's when we're going to turn and change the shape into bong larp sal. So the idea, first of all, is he punches, I deflect the shape with bong. From there, I chop in with bong larp sound. So from here, he punches one, I take it, I bong larp sound, I chop. Now initially at this stage, you can make the assumption that as someone punches, you hit, boom, and you catch them on the first one. But very often, what most students find from experience is that even the average person has the ability to get his hands up, the ability to be able to protect himself under pressure. If it's a confrontation, if it's a fight, the person will get their hands up. So give them credit. Give them credit for the fact that if you attack them, they will protect themselves. And that's why Wing Chun is such a clever system, because we never take it for granted that someone's going to punch, I'm going to block it and hit him back. I always make the assumption that I'm going to attack back once defending myself, and the person will try to defend themselves. Why? Because it's a fight. If it's a fight, that's what the person will do. He will protect himself. So, let me show you what I mean. If my partner punches, we're starting with a very basic concept. Notice it's still. I'm punching up towards the nose. The pressure comes in and crushes the punch down. I change into a bong larp sao chop. My partner blocks the technique, okay? As he blocks the technique, it will always be with the rear hand. Where's the gap? Where's the sensitivity? Where's the first sense of touch that we find? Let's go back, let's do this again. So in training this, what I want you to practice when you're doing this at home is first of all, you can start with Mun Sao or you can start with a punch. It really doesn't matter. We'll start with Mun Sao because it's easier. If you're, if you're relatively new to Wing Chun, you're a beginner or an intermediate level standard, it's, it'll be far more effective for you to start with a bridge rather than going with the interpretation of the punch. So if my partner punches into my bridge, I turn and form Bong Sao. As, he for, as I form Bong Sao, make sure you shift properly across, deflecting the shape across and the punch across from your body. Your rear guard hand should be behind towards the bicep. It shouldn't be drifting out here. If it's between the bicep, I can always strike forward because it gives me a good point of coverage and a good point of protection. As the shape collapses, and this is pretty standard to most of your training in Wing Chun, you pull the hand down so it clears your arm. At the same time, you hinge and you chop forward. As I chop forward, my partner will block. So when you do this at home, try and make sure that your partner blocks because that's the objective of this exercise. Now, as he blocks, I want you to feel how he blocks. Does he push forward? Does he push to the side? Does he push slightly downwards with his rear hand? Try to get that information from what you feel. So from this position, as I hit forward, I feel that my partner's pushing slightly out. He's blocking and pushing slightly out. Most people in the street will do. They don't do Wing Chun. So they're not going to 
bring a nice woos out, a nice rear guard hand up. They'll often panic when you chop, you go and wallop and you chop with a little bit of spin power. They'll often panic and go, ah, like that, and open themselves. As he does that, what I want you to feel is the gap that opens between the arm that you've lapped down, the punch, and the arm that he's protecting himself with. That gap is where we're going to strike from underneath because he naturally imposes that. He naturally imposes that gap. Now, there's a couple of things. First thing I want to pay attention to. As I turn on my LARP cell, it's imperative, it's crucial, it's vital. I'm really going to stress this for you, that you do not leave your hand forward. Quite a few of my own students, when I'm teaching this in the class, especially the intermediate students, will hit through and leave the arm forward. If I do that, Eric, trap, please, bang. I'll be trapped and obviously hit multiple times. Okay, bang, bang, bang. As we've established earlier in the DVD, Winchung's a multiple strike system. So from this position, one of the crucial points, can you punch the other one for me, please? Thanks. As he blocks, I actually make sure I square up and I hit through with an open hand, Cheng Sao, rising from high to low. High to low is important because it comes under the vision. Under the field of vision makes it very, very difficult for the person to see. If you think about it, it comes under the periphery, and when they're blocking, and as they block, it comes literally under their arm and to the jaw. So you're not going forward where they can react and get the other hand up again quickly. You're coming up, and you're striking the jaw with the heel of the hand. You're hitting with the flat palm of the hand, straight into the jaw, and pushing it forward. So, as he comes forward, the training exercise that we're going to go through is he punches, I turn, I LARP, and I chop. You should already know LARP sound, basic bong LARP sound from your training in the class. What you're now going to do is take this a stage further. So as your partner blocks, okay, don't do anything at the second, I'm going to hit through and pull the other arm forward. Now again, as a sequence, punch, the basic sequence, one, go, and again, two, go. It's a great skill to start your Wing Chun training with. It's a great skill because I'm automatically learning punch, bang, boom, to hit twice and to feel, whip, go, feel, boom, where my partner's weaknesses are. If I can feel, go, one, two, three, four, where his weaknesses are, I can respond and hit forward and be quite lively with that. 